Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about currency futures, interest rate futures, and swaps. So I'll start off talking about currency futures, how they work, and give you an, a brief example. I'll then move on to interest rate futures, and then finally, I'll wrap up with a, a detailed example of how swaps work, specifically interest rate swaps. Okay, so let's start off with currency futures. Uh, sometimes these are called FX futures or foreign exchange futures. Uh, now these are essentially contracts that allow two traders uh, to bet on the future exchange rate between two currencies, say the British pound or, and the yen, or the dollar and the euro, etc., etc. Uh, now these currency futures, there's a number of factors that will affect the value of them. The first one is inflation. So let's take a look at an example. So I put together the exchange rate between the US dollar, USD, and the Argentinian peso, ARS. This graph shows the number of Argentinian pesos that each dollar buys. Back in 2016, that number was pretty low, we'll say less than 50. Today that number is somewhere around 861 pesos per US dollar. So what's driving this? Well, it's inflation. Essentially. Argentina went through a period of hyperinflation, and the U.S. dollar didn't. Uh, so the value of the Argentinian peso was uh, depreciated relative to the value of pretty much every other currency, currency on Earth, with a few very rare exceptions. So uh, this is what happens and how exchange rates change. Now there are two other factors that can drive uh, currency futures. I suppose there's others, but these are the other big two. We have interest rates, and we have imports and exports, or net exports if we want to call them that. So let's take a look at how this works. I think it's best to take a look at how interest rates and supply and demand can impact uh, exchange rates by looking at the forward rate uh, formula uh, for, for currencies. So what we have here is a formula that tells us the forward rate or the forward exchange rate, which is equal to the current spot rate or the spot exchange rate between two currencies, uh, times one plus the risk-free rate in one country. Usually we say that is the foreign country relative to us, to the power of time to maturity, all divided by the quantity of one plus our domestic country's risk-free rate uh, to the power of t. So if we wanted to know, let's say, the now, the forward exchange rate for uh, British pounds per US dollar, uh, six months from now, we would just plug in the spot rate, pounds per dollar today, identify the risk-free rate in both those countries, put in 0.5 for 0.5 years, and it would spit out the forward exchange rate. So let's take a look at that, you know, a similar example. We know the spot price of US dollars per British pounds is 1.25. Uh, the yield on the five-year gilt, which is the British uh, risk-free rate, is 1.05%. And the yield on the five-year T-note, which is the U.S. risk-free rate, is 87 basis points. What is the forward rate on this currency future, or this, this contract? So spot rate, 1.25. Uh, what this says is that each British pound buys 1.25 U.S. dollars. That's typically how we read, uh, you know, foreign currency divided by domestic currency. Uh, we know the risk-free rate in the foreign market, that's 1.05%. We know the risk-free rate in the domestic market, that's 87 bips. Time to maturity, T is 5. And so we just plug everything into our equation. So here we go. And what we get is a forward rate of 1.2612. Uh, so because the amounts here are pretty small. We typically carry this number out to the closest 10,000th. Uh, so that, that's just standard practice in foreign exchange. Uh, so notice here that because the risk-free rate in Great Britain was larger than that in our home country, our domestic country of the US, uh, the exchange rate actually increased. Uh, so each British pound now buys $1.26 uh, worth of currency. Now the next type of contract we have is an interest rate futures contract. And these contracts, these are futures contracts on assets whose price is dependent on uh, the level of interest rate futures. Uh, so these will typically allow a buyer and a seller to lock in uh, the price of an interest-bearing asset to be paid in the future. 
Uh, so these are really useful for locking in the price of, let's say, a, a government bond in the future. Uh, that, that's probably the best way to think about these. Uh, so a couple other points on this. Uh, most of these interest rate futures, they're settled in cash. So, you know, we would, you know, write interest rate futures contracts on the SOFA rate. Uh, typically, these contracts are going to be written on, say, like uh, Fed funds or SOFA, uh, but there are others. So let's take a look at this uh, in a very quick example. So I'm on the CME Group's website, and these this is a listing of their interest rate futures uh, that they have available. So they have these futures on U.S. Treasuries, on the SOFA rate, on Fed funds, T-bills. Uh, you have a number of different futures, uh, but you know there's basically the futures market for interest-bearing securities is it's pretty diverse. Although typically you're looking at uh, very very liquid assets uh, that you're trading. Okay, the final asset that we have are swaps. And swaps, these are just derivatives that uh, allow two parties to exchange cash flows or liabilities from two different financial instruments. Now, there's a lot of reasons to use swaps, but the most common reason for firms to use them is to alter the cash flows that they have to pay to creditors. There are all kinds of swaps out there, including interest rate swaps, commodity swaps, currency swaps, credit default swaps, the list goes on and on. However, interest rate swaps are the most common, so let's have a look at that. So let's take a look at an example. Firm A receives a loan with a variable rate that is SOFR plus 2%. So SOFR is our base rate, and we're adding 2% to account for the risk of Firm A defaulting. Uh, so currently that rate is 4.25%. Firm B receives a loan with a fixed rate of 5%. Typically, fixed rate loans are going to come with a higher starting rate than uh, variable interest rate loans. Uh, now, both loans are going to mature in four years, and they have a, they all, both have a face value of a million dollars. Now, let's say that firm A wanted to swap with firm B. Uh, and so, you know, essentially the firm A is going to take on firm B's loan or loan payments, and firm B is going to take on firm A's loan payments. Uh, there's many reasons why they might do this. Maybe firm A, they have this variable rate, but they actually want the certainty of a fixed rate loan. They know how much they have to pay every period, uh, and they don't have to be subject to interest rate risk or as much interest rate risk. Maybe firm B likes the possibility of paying less than 5% every single period uh, so or every year. Uh, so they might actually like the variable rate loan better. So they decide to swap uh, cash flows. So here we have these, these two firms. Uh, firm A, it has uh, the low stable cash inflows and wants stable cash outflows. Firm B, let's say it's very profitable. It wants to pay as low a rate as possible. So basically exactly what I told you. Uh, so they can swap their cash flows for the life of their loan agreement through a bank. There's an intermediary in each of these swaps. So firm A, uh, they're gonna pay, they're, they were pay, uh, firm B is gonna take firm A's loan. So firm B is now gonna pay SOFR plus 2%. And firm A is going to take on firm B's obligations. They're gonna pay the fixed 5% rate. So the swap breaks down like this. Uh, essentially, you know, the amount that each party is gonna pay is going to depend on the change in interest rates over the life of this loan. So firm A, they took on firm B's fixed interest rate loan, which had a 5% uh, yield or uh, interest rate. So every year, they're going to owe $50,000 on that loan. Firm B, they took the variable rate loan. And so, you know, year one maybe is 4%, next year is 3%, then 7 then 6 uh, So this is the amount that they're going to owe uh, that firm A would have owned prior to the swap. Now the difference, this is the amount that changes hands. Uh, so this is what makes the swap a little interesting. So firm B, uh, in year one, they owe less money than firm A. Firm A is going to owe the $50,000 total. Uh, essentially firm A owes more than firm B, so firm A is going to transfer $10,000 to firm B. It's a cash transfer. Uh, the next year, maybe the interest rates fall uh, to 3%, and firm A 
owes 50,000. Now firm B owes 30,000. The difference is 20,000. So firm A pays firm B $20,000. Uh, years three and four though, the reverse is true. Interest rates go up to 7%. Now firm B having taken on the variable rate mortgage or loan that firm A started with, they have a higher interest burden than firm A. So they're going to pay firm A $20,000 in year three and you know 6% rate. Uh, firm B is going to pay firm A $10,000 in year four. So basically these firms, they're changing cash flows and then whoever is the loser in this party in a given period they're going to uh, make a cash transfer to the winner um, in each period. So that's basically it. So just to kind of summarize, the difference is provided by one of the parties to the other, uh, rather than each firm paying the other's interest. Uh, so you know, basically, firm A is going to pay firm B, or firm A, uh, B is going to pay firm A. A uh, bank is always going to act as an intermediary, and although you know the total interest paid didn't change. The timing did. So firm A, it started out with a variable rate. Now it has a fixed rate. Firm B, it started out with uh, a fixed rate and it ended up with a variable rate. And you know, if you know, in this say year one, uh, firm B got ten thousand dollars that it can use to pay off uh, its loan, you know, its fixed rate loan. And firm A, you know, it, it got certainty. All right, let's summarize. Uh, we talked about currency. Futures first, and we talked about how we calculate the forward currency rate or exchange rate. Uh, so currency futures, they allow investors to lock in an exchange rate that should be pretty, pretty close to the uh, forward rate. Interest rate futures allow investors to bet on future interest rates, usually on uh, very, very liquid bonds. So T-bills, T-notes, T-bonds. Uh, and then finally, we saw a very detailed example of swaps. Essentially, swaps allow firm to adjust their cash flows to suit their own needs. And, you know, they just exchange the cash flows uh, or cash once they enter into that swap agreement. So with that, I'm going to conclude. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.